guys, it's Katie here, and as you can see, we are not in The Sims, we are in The Sims 4 Studio. So that means I'm going to be showing you guys a video on custom content. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make custom content recolors, at least for hairs. So what you'll need is you'll need The Sims 4 Studio and then any photo editing software that you use. I use Photoshop, so that's what I'm going to be showing you how to use today. So we're going to start by going into the cast create a standalone item and I'm going to choose out hair and then I want to go to vintage glamour because I want to use this this bob and I want to recolor it. So in what I use some people use this white hair to use as the base to recolor and I use the platinum colored hair. I know some people also do that. Um, I think it makes it look more natural, I guess. It kind of makes sense in my brain because when you dye your hair, you want to start with platinum blonde and then you add color to it. So that's how I envision it working. So you're only going to need that one color. Um, whether you choose the white or the platinum or whatever other color you want to use as the base, um, just keep in mind it will have undertones of that hair color throughout all your recolors based on how we do it. So yeah. So I'm going to choose that one. So we only need the one. And then we'll do next. And I'm just going to call it Blonde Bab. And it's going to open it up here in a minute. And there we go. So all we need today is the texture. So we're going to export the texture. And call it the same thing. And put it onto our desktop. So what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to go into Photoshop and file, open, and then choose the texture. So what we need to do is we need to select just the layer, but we need to be able to do it on another layer, if that makes sense. So what I use is the quick selection tool. And then if you shift and then kind of drag, it usually selects the entire area. Um, that's just how I do it to get everything that we need. Now everything is selected. So now that means that whenever we draw something, regardless of the layer that it's on, it will only affect those areas because we still need this all this other stuff to be transparent. Otherwise, that color is just going to be overlaid over basically the entire sim and any other accessories or clothing that they're wearing. And you don't want that. You just want the color that you're adding to affect the hair. So what I do is I add a second layer. And the first thing I do is you'll want to create a palette of some sort just so you have like consistency between any future recolors that you do. So I have a lovely palette here that I made. So I'm just going to use the eyedropper tool and grab the first color. So then what you can do is you can just, so make sure you're not on the base layer. Make sure you're on a new layer. And I just use the paint bucket tool to fill in the layer. So now you can see everything is just pink. And we don't, we don't want that. So what you have to do is you have to go down to the opacity down here and change it. I do it at 40%. I think that looks nice and it works and it makes me happy. So then all you have to do is you save, save as, you want to save it as a PNG file again. Um, so I'm going to save it as pink bob and save it to my desktop. Okay. Now we're going to put away Photoshop and come back here into the studio. So what we're going to do is we're going to import the new texture and it'll load up hopefully. My cat is staring at me living his life. So we added the texture and it now shows the hair. So I think it, it looks fine. It looks good. It's how I want it. Now, what you can do is you want to probably change the swatch thumbnail. Um, you can do that here in the color wheel, or you can make individual 
swatch color things uh, for each color, which is handy dandy. And it has all these little different ways you can choose colors. Um, but I, I haven't made little swatches yet, so I'm just going to choose like a pinky color and call that good. So that's the first one. Now we're going to want to add a swatch and then import a new texture. So we're going to go back into Photoshop. And what's nice about this is we can just hide that pink layer and then um, add a new layer and continue with the process. So you'll choose the color, fill bucket, change the opacity, 40%, um, save it as a PNG, uh, do, 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 PNG, orange, save, okay, go back into the Sims 4 Studio, import a new mesh, do the orange one, it'll load up, hopefully, any second now. And there we go. So it added the new one, just gonna change the color of the swatch, and we have the new color. So it's pretty simple process. I'm going to add the rest of them. And then I will show you what it looks like in game. Okay, guys, so we are in The Sims 4, and I'm gonna show you the hair and show you what it looks like in the game. Okie dokie. Content, custom content. Pink, let's, let's go to do, do, do. vintage glamour. And there it is. There is the beautiful hair that is there. So we have all the colors, I think they're pretty snazzy, the browns are kind of super boring because they're just browns, might get rid of them because honestly you don't need that many colors. Uh, anyhow, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so there it is, in game, that's how you do it. Simple, fun, easy to do. Uh, it's just tedious in the fact that there's a lot of repetition of coloring, saving, coloring, saving, coloring, saving. But it's pretty easy. Anyone can do it. It's fun. If you think it's fun. If you don't think it's fun, then it's not. But, like, if you got a positive attitude and you're like, you know what? This is fun. It's fun. Um, anywho, I hope you all have a lovely day. I just realized that this is, like, this is my hair color, and it makes me really happy, and now I'm gonna have to recolor everything in this color. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, anywho, uh, I will see you all next time. Um, I might do another custom content video at some point. I don't know. I'd like to, because... I feel like tutorials on this kind of stuff is beneficial for people because I feel like a lot of how I learned was just kind of clicking buttons to figure everything out. Um, so I thought, make tutorials. Make it easier for someone else. You know? Um, anywho, I will see you all next time. Bye-bye!